Hello fellow crafters and welcome to my next project. I'm going to be doing another challenge card this time for the month of August and I will be using my leftover flower petals and leaves from last month's challenge. So I will link that video up top here if you want to take a look at that and how I made that flower. And here you can see, here's the inspiration image I will be using. I will be doing my best to get those colors. So I'm just going to show you my leftover. That's the center I made for the last card and didn't use. And I'm likely just going to throw that in the garbage. But you can also see here my petals and leaves that I have left over. Now the design on this card is going to be half a flower kind of coming off the edge of the panel with a hummingbird. Now, in order for me to get the colors in that inspiration challenge, I am going to have to use watercolor because I'm going to have to mix those colors to get them. So I've got a lot of colors here. I'm going to be doing a lot of mixing. I've got the blue and green for that teal. I've got, I may use the paper bag uh, for my peach color. I may not. It depends. I had to do a lot of trial and error to again get that teal there's a peach there's a beige a beige a beige gray it's kind of beigey gray color and again i have to mix my colors i've got some extra colors like the red and that brown that i may come in with if i need it it just kind of depends how my mixing goes i'm not the best at mixing watercolor i really just do my best at it so i'm going to be using some hot press watercolor paper it is quite white. I thought about using my Bristol Smooth because that's a really nice bright white, but I use that more for my Zig brush markers. I find that works better. I have a feeling I'm going to be using a lot of water and I'm not entirely sure that Bristol Smooth will hold up. So I'm going to be using some hot press watercolor paper. Now I'm just doing a makeshift flower just because I want to see where I'm going to put my hummingbird. And I'm going to be using the archival ink because it is alcohol based which is best to use with your watercolors you don't want to use a dye ink just because that dye ink is water based and you could get some mixing with your watercolors and i don't want to risk that so i always use the archival with my watercolors now you'll also notice that my panel isn't quite cut down yet and I'm not going to do that until I'm done painting. So I am going to mix my colors. I'm going to show, kind of show you what I did. Again, trial and error. I did do some mixing earlier um, to figure out which colors I needed and I'm going to do some mixing here on video and you'll notice with the peach I actually have to start over again just i wasn't getting the peach color i was looking for so i had added too much of something or not enough of something else i don't know i couldn't remember i did so much trial and error that i just couldn't quite remember so now i'm going to throw on some music and i will pop back in here with a few words when i need to
Okay, so what I've been trying to do here is trying to lift some of the color from the wings. I thought it was a little too dark and I thought it would look better if it was lighter. I got a little bit of color up, but not much. I think I had already put down too much. Um, I just wanted to show you a couple other variations of the hummingbird that I painted earlier. And you can see all my test spots too with the watercolor, trying to get the proper color. This one was actually painted on the Bristol Smooth and you can see how white that paper is compared to regular watercolor paper so I really liked it. I really enjoyed using kind of the pink and blue as well but it didn't quite go with the challenge for this month so this is where I moved to the challenge colors for the bird and you can see here again just practicing with those colors. That one is a little too dark but this one here I really like. I like how light and soft that one is. It's a little softer than what I've painted in this video, but still really beautiful. So what I'm doing now, and again, as I mentioned earlier, I had created a video for last month's challenge where I did a different center for that flower. I actually used I almost created like a button cushion for the center of that flower on my previous video. On this one, I'm going to use die cut circles. So I die cut watercolor paper and I'm just coloring that in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to layer those circle die cuts and I'm going to put the petals in between those layers. And what that's going to do is give me a little bit more dimension with that flower instead of having all those petals on that one layer on that one die cut. So what I'm doing now is I'm just putting together my layers and what I don't realize is that I only need half a flower but I actually start putting the flower together like I'm doing a whole flower but I only need half that flower because I'm going to put it up against the edge of that card panel. So I get it going here pretty good and realize my mistake and then pull them out. So I'm going to throw the music back on and I will catch you at the back end.
All right, so here is my finished project. I did some touch-ups there on the side of that center of the flower, and you can see all of that dimension with the flower. I'm trying now to get some of that glitter to show on camera here. So it is quite subtle. It's one of the things I love about that glitter pen. It just gives you a little bit of subtlety. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this project inspires you to create something yourself. And please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I will catch you at the next project. <music>